but it's deep. It's showing how real the Bible is, how real God is. Let me share one thing okay. here Take now. Your Take your liberty. Okay. Let's okay. go. Okay. This I will call it's 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 I believe it's in that set as the dark angel sacrifice. But let me. This is the mystery of Pergamon. The next part. Okay. Now let me just let me just backtrack. We started. We, we shared about the mystery of Pergamon. Be, begins on the Temple Mount. It's actually ultimately linked to the end times when a man named Antiochus desecrates the temple by setting up an idol. This is the first abomination desolation. It's going to be repeated in the last days, but this is the first one. Daniel speaks about it. He sets up an altar of Zeus over the altar, or, or the, the idol of Zeus over the altar of God, converts God's altar, holy altar, into an altar of Zeus. And with that, he launches a war to wipe out the Jewish people. This is satanic. This is Satan. This is going to be the end times, Antichrist. But he does it then by a miracle. The Maccabees rise up, and they, they, they get to the temple. They win. They restore the temple, take down that idol, the abomination, restore Hanukkah. And you have the Hanukkah. Okay. Yeah. But the war doesn't end. It's almost as if the enemy is doing a counterattack, because at that same moment, a, an, a friend of Antiochus, the, the kind of foreshadow of the Antichrist, Sets up another altar of Zeus, okay, on a gigant on a mountain, makes a gigantic altar, and it is called it is the altar of Pergamon, the altar of Zeus. Now, this is one of the big pagan things of ancient times, to Zeus. Now, when you get to the Book of Revelation and it speaks to the Church of Pergamon, it says, it says to the Church of Pergamon, it says Pergamon is the place where the throne of Satan is. It says where Satan dwells. And what was in Pergamon was the altar of Zeus. Now remember, we spoke about behind yeah. all the gods, behind all, they're just masks, behind it all is Satan. Behind yeah. all this stuff is Satan. So you have this place called the, the throne, the altar of Zeus, the altar of Pergamon, throne of Satan. Now, now I'm just going to kind of move it to where we are. All right, Christianity comes to the Roman Empire. Ultimately, that altar is abandoned. Fades away, goes into the dust, gone. Dormant, the altar of, the throne of Satan, dormant. 2,000 years. But in the 19th century, a man uncovers this throne of Satan, and he starts sending the pieces back to his homeland. And he first doesn't know what it is. It goes back in 1871, first pieces. And where does the, and then, then, he, then they start excavating the entire altar. The throne of Satan is now appearing in the modern age. And he sends it back piece by piece to his ancient land, I mean, to his homeland, where they reconstruct it. So now the altar of Satan, or the throne of Satan, is not in Pergamon. It's in Germany. Germany. Germany now has the altar, the throne of Satan. And it actually, the first pieces arrive in 1871. That's the moment Germany comes into existence. Then in, oh. eight, then in 1878, they begin excavating the entire altar. When they do that, 1878 is the year that anti-Semitism begins in Germany. So now Germany has the, the throne of Satan. And now they finally complete the altar in the year 1889 in Berlin. Is now the throne of Satan in Berlin is completed. That same year, a baby is born in a Germanic land whose name is Adolf Hitler. In the year that the altar comes. But now what happens is Germany is going to be the cent at the center of the first global destruction of the w in, in the world. The First World War is going to be centered on that, on Berlin, which has the altar yeah. of Satan. Actually, let me say one more thing about, about, about this baby is that there's a day in the, in the Hebrew calendar that the rabbis calculate is the first day that, that there was a, an attempt to annihilate the Jewish people, the day that Pharaoh charged after the Israelites and, and to, to wipe them out of the Red Sea. That date they date is Nisan 19, as the first attempted annihilation of the Jewish people. Nisan 19 is the Hebrew day that Hitler is born. So World War I, I'm not even going, there's so much to go into, but say World War I, destruction. Well, after the war, after that destruction, the altar is still there in Berlin. What happens is the next evil comes from, Berlin, from Germany. What happens is the Nazis begin to rise. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a drama of watching when the Nazis are making their way to Berlin where the altar is. In 1930, the altar is opened up to the public. In 1930, that year, the Nazi party goes from being the smallest political party in Germany to the number two. It wins the elections, enters the Reichstag. They start boot going to power. Within three years, Hitler becomes chancellor of Germany. Within four years, he is dictator. And so now, he, Hitler, the baby, born with the altar, is now with the altar in Berlin. Now, the Nazis have possession of the throne of Satan. I mean, this is like Indiana Jones, except it's real. I mean, yeah. this is real. And so the, the Nazis have possession of the throne of Satan, the altar of Pergamon. 
And so what, and it's almost like, but what happens is, it's like Germany is going to become possessed. The entire nation is going to become, in a sense, possessed. And so one of the things that, the first thing that, that what Hitler does is he says, I want a platform so I can speak to Germany, I can speak to the world. So he appoints his architect, Albert Speer, to build him a platform to spew his, 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 his venom. So the Albert Speer happened to have visited the altar of Pergamon in Berlin. So he gets the idea, I'm going to build the platform of Hitler as a recreation of the altar of Pergamon, the throne of Satan. So when you see Hitler speaking at those great mass of riots, it's in Nuremberg. When you see all the, the torch lights and all that, that's all around this massive reproduction of uh -huh. the altar of Pergamon. Uh -oh. And so when Hitler is railing off and speaking, it's on top of the altar, the throne of Satan. I mean, how exact is that? One of the major enemies, a goal of the enemy is to wipe out the Jewish people, just like he tried by putting that altar of Zeus in, on the Temple Mount, which yes. is a foreshadow yeah. of the abomination in the last days. Yes. So now what happens is, it's the throne of Satan. Well, on a throne, a king speaks. So on that throne, Hitler, the enemy speaks through Hitler. And then on, from a throne, a king rules. So from that throne it comes, the, comes laws. What happens is from that same city, at the same time of that gathering, when Hitler's on, on, that, on that podium, and that same time, they come up with the Nuremberg Laws. The Nuremberg Laws are the beginning of the Holocaust. And that's, it's, on, it's in Nuremberg during the rally around that altar that Hitler, for the first time, says the word final solution. Oh. Happens there on the altar of Satan, or the throne of Satan. But now more, now we go deeper, if you, you get deeper. The throne of Satan is not just a throne, it is an altar. What is an altar? An altar requires blood. An altar requires a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. An altar requires something be lifted up that way. So. The first thing, not, so what begins from that, time, that place is the, the, is the beginning of the Holocaust. The Holocaust is not just a death, a sacrifice. It is a, the, the, the altar of Zeus was an altar of burnt offerings. Uh -huh. The Holocaust is a burnt offering. Oh my God. Satan, Satan wow. behind this. The altar, the altar of Pergamon involved burning and ashes. So this is, oh. this is how evil, this is how evil... Yeah the Satan is. And so now the mystery gets even deeper. This How is, many millions Jews were burned? Six million. Sacrificed. Six million. Burned. Satanic. Satanic. Sat anybody who denies Satan, you, you, can't, you have to deny the Holocaust. Right. Because there's this no way you can explain it. This is unbelievable what he's putting together. Yeah. If you understand the Holocaust, understand this most unforgivable, unbelievable event in history. This is how real what we're dealing with is. So here's what happened. It goes even deeper. What does the enemy always do? He desecrates. He defiles. Yes. Yes. So here's the thing. What he did in ancient times, which is the original abomination desolation, he didn't just have his, it wasn't just an altar of Zeus somewhere. It was, it was converting God's altar, the holy altar at the temple, the altar of sacrifice. He converted it into an unholy altar. Okay. <laughs> so what the enemy does as he seeks to destroy it, the Jewish people, because he knows if he can't destroy them, he loses. So... He takes their own holy, the holy things that God gave them. They were saved by the sacrifices on that altar in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, the holy altar, the altar of sacrifice, that's how they were saved from their sins on Yom Kippur. That was their holy thing. This mm. is a holy thing. Mm. Mm. But he takes what is holy and he turns it, instead of saving the Jewish people, to destroy the Jewish people. So, what he, so here the thing is that for the altar of God on the Temple Mount was an altar of burnt offering. He, so, and the thing is that, so the holiest day, the whole, that, well, actually, Yom Kippur involves the scapegoat. You put your sins on the scapegoat. What, hap, what, what, did, what did Satan do to the Jewish people in Germany? He made them the, the scapegoat. scapegoat. That's from Yom Kippur. That's, ah. from, that's something holy. They put, Blamed all the trouble. They, they put their sins on the Jewish people. And that, then another thing is on Yom Kippur, the, the sacrifice was marked by the color red, put a, put a scarlet cord on it. When Hitler, when the Holocaust began, to begin the Holocaust, they changed the passports. They marked all the Jewish people with a, on their passports, they put a, a letter J in red. So they're marked. In a sense, the sacrifice is marked. Then, what did they do with the sacrifice on the, on, on the, holy, the holy sacrifice? The sacrifice would be led, and it led to the place of slaughter. It wasn't hunted down, it was led to the place. What, what happened to the Jewish people? They were led like lambs to the slaughter, to the place of sacrifice. And wh what were they led in? Cattle cars, which carried cattle, 
lambs right. and goats, the very sacrifices that were offered up oh. on Yom Kippur. Now, let's go even deeper. What did the, what did the Greeks call the, that altar of Zeus, the altar of burnt offering? Listen, the word in Greek for Zeus's altar, the altar of Zeus, the, which is the altar of Pergamon, the throne of Satan, mm -hmm. the, the, in Greek, the word, the word was for burnt was kaustos, and for the completely burnt offering was halas. Put it together, halas kostos, it was holocaust. Ah. It was the altar of holocaust. The altar of Zeus, the throne of Satan, was called the altar of holocaust, of the holocaust. Um. Hitler was standing on top of a reproduction of Satan. This is th Satan's throne. It was the already, before that was called, was the altar of holocaust. Is there. Hit Satan is into holocaust, is into destruction. Dest on the altar of Zeus were lifted up holocaust in ancient times, and those offerings were done at night and hidden away as the holocaust was hidden as it was being done. But in the Bible itself, in the Bible, now again, this is the enemy took something holy, twisted it. Yeah. Leviticus, it says in Leviticus 5.10, it says you shall offer a burnt offering. But in the Septuagint, the Septuagint, which you've had here, the Greek tr ancient translation that the New Testament used, it says this, it says he shall offer the second for a holocaust. It says in Leviticus 16, Yom Kippur, it says they shall offer in the Septuagint, it says he shall offer his holocaust and the holocaust of the people. Leviticus 4, he shall slay the sin offering in the place of the Holocaust. Long before the, it's like the enemy's taking things that were holy for salvation and t turning them for evil against it. Now, now listen to this wow. last, now listen to this. In 2 Chronicles 29, verse 7, it says, they did not offer burnt offerings in the holy place. It's holy place, burnt offerings. There's a place in Europe called the holy place. It's in Poland. In, it, its name is Oswienchim. In Germany, it means the holy place. In, that's, where the, that's where the offering would be made. In, the, in German, that holy place, or the, called the holy place, Oswienchim, becomes the word Auschwitz. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Auschwitz means the holy place. You translate, if you translate that scripture into the two, two languages of the enemy, of, who became enemies of the Jewish people, the Greeks with Zeus and the Germans, it becomes they shall offer burnt offerings in the holy place shall become they shall offer the holocaust in Auschwitz. Oh my. The, the enemy was behind it all. The enemy is real. And not only, not only the holocaust, because that wasn't the only destruction, but linked to the holocaust was the, the greatest destruction that ever covered the earth so far. And that was the second world war. And so it happened, the two happened together. He attacked the Jews first. It says to the Jew first. The Gospels to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Well, also calamity comes to the Jew first. The enemy knows if he can attack the Jews, he can attack the world. If he can get the Jews out of the way, he's got the world. So that's why we, have to, we also have to bless Israel. So who was offered up first? The Jewish people. Then the people of all nations. How many were killed in the Second World War? 60 million people. How many were killed in the Holocaust? 6 million. They were the tithe, the tenth, the first fruit. The first fruits. The sacrifice was the first fruit. And what does it say in the Bible? It actually says that the Jewish people are the first fruits of God for salvation, for blessing, but now the enemy turns it on its head. And now, though, and in the end, Hitler ends up bringing his own destruction. When you serve the enemy, when you get into sin, you bring your own destruction. Hitler ends up killing himself, and then he commands that his body be burnt. It's the last burnt offering. Oh. Huh. And, and when is it done? It is done on April 30th. That night is Walpurgis night, which is the night, one of the most important satanic nights in the, in the year. And, and it's the night when they offer sacrifices. Hitler was the last, his own, the own satanic sacrifice. As the global cataclysm nears its end, the armies of America and the allies converge with the, the red armies of the Soviet Union. They all converge on the city of the altar of Satan. They all converge to Berlin. They all come there. It's as if it's drawing every the, 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 the calamity came from Berlin, and now it all comes back to where that altar is. Now everything is destroyed. They have judgment now comes to the Third Reich in Berlin and Nuremberg, the two places of the altar and that massive altar of, of Hitler. And the, the, those who are still there, there are 10. The Nuremberg 10 are those who are convicted and are hung. They are hung. They are hung on a Hebrew holy day. That's a day that's known that is marked for judgment. So they, are, they, are all, they die on a Hebrew holy day. 
You know, it said there was actually a, a, a story told that Hitler went to a medium, a psychic, and said, I said, when am I going to die? He says, you, she says, you're going to die on a Hebrew holy day. He says, he says well, that's crazy. He, said, he says, how do, I, how do you know that? He, she said, any day you die is going to be a Hebrew holy day. <laughs> <laughs> but God caused it happening that way. So now, but here's now, let's bring it home. This has now come to America, this mystery. It has come to the whole world. I mean, but we'll hold off, and it's going to lead to the end times. But let me just bring this this way. Yes, take why your time. Is, <laughs> this is so amazing. Why is the, has the enemy warred against the altar of God from the beginning? From the days of Antiochus' abomination to the days of the Antichrist, he will. Why? Because the altar of God, the altar of burnt offering, was a sign, was a shadow of the cross of Messiah. Why is he so against it? That was the foreshadow of the offering of the sacrifice of Messiah. And, so, and, so, and the offering of Messiah is the defeat of the enemy. He hates the cross. Ultimately, that's yes. a sign of the cross. But he takes it and tries to do everything he can to twist it. And so the, and the first foreshadow of that altar comes in Genesis 22, when God says to Abraham, take your only son whom you love and offer him up on the, on the land of Moriah. Well, he offers his son, he offers Isaac up in the land of Moriah, and that is where, that becomes the Temple Mount, that's where they build that altar, but that comes from Abraham and Isaac, that's where they built that altar, you know, on that Temple Mount, this yeah. from that, but in, but in the Septuagint, listen, you know Genesis 22, but listen, in the Septuagint, it would read this way, take your only son, whom you love, and offer your son as a holocaust. That's mm. what it says in the Septuagint. Oh my. Verse 3, and Abraham split the wood for the Holocaust. Verse 8, God will provide himself the lamb for the Holocaust. The lamb for the Holocaust. Every time you see burnt offering in the Septuagint, it says Holocaust. And so the mystery of this, of it goes back to the beginning, and it's saying, what's the answer? The lamb is, in other words, the lamb is going to take the full judgment of the enemy. The lamb suffer. You, what's the answer to the Holocaust? The lamb of God. Mm. That, the, the lamb of God. What's the answer to It's a sign of hell. He's the one who takes hell upon himself. He takes all that the enemy does for us and takes it upon himself. The lamb is the answer to the darkness. The lamb is the answer to the Holocaust. The yeah. lamb is the answer to the judgment. Thank the Jewish people, the, and this all makes it, for 2,000 years they've had no lamb for the most. They haven't had their, not only their altar, they haven't had the, they haven't had the lamb, Messiah. So they've been without the protection of the lamb who takes the Holocaust, who takes all, the, all that the enemy does, takes the judgment. So that's why they've been vulnerable They've been vulnerable to what the enemy has done. They've been, they've been like sheep without a shepherd. They've been vulnerable. Wow. That's why. And so, because if, you know, either he takes your hell or you, you bear it. But he takes it. So, so the Jewish people for 2,000 years, the enemy is furious to destroy them. You know, you know the Bible likens the enemy to a wolf, you know, among yes. the molest. Yes. And the Jewish people are spoken of as a sheep, sheep without a shepherd. Well, you know, here's one more thing about it. Adolf Hitler is born. The name Adolf means the wolf. Huh. Oh. And this reveals, this is just, I can't do this so much, but, but it reveals how real the enemy is. we got a real enemy. He's real. Yes. I, I mean, the cross, you're talking about the cross. Yes. How it, the cross has been hated and hated. America has now yes. gone to hating the cross, people. This should be another harbinger of warning of what yes. we need to do in this country. We yes. have taken our protection away, yes. is what you're that telling us. That is the protection. Our protection, it's just like, if we were founded, America was founded after the pattern of Israel, now we are removing the cross or Messiah, we have no protection. When 9-11 happened, there's only there's one part of that building that's still standing, and that is the cross. When everything yes. is gone, the cross still stands. Yes. That's the one thing. Yes. You know, yes. And, and so what it, it's, it tells you, this is, this is not a, it's not a play thing, it's not something we just come up with. This is a real thing we're in. This is a real fight. It's and when real. the end times go, gets, it gets, we can progress, it's going to get even more so. But the thing, is that, the thing is that it reveals something. We have to take this seriously and take it that every sin, every temptation is the war of the enemy against your soul. It's, it's war to destroy you. Treat it as that. Treat it as poison. Treat it as 
bad as it is, any sin, any temptation, don't play with it because it's to kill, it is to destroy you. And the other thing is it tells you how important the cross is. Don't ever get away from it. Don't get into a side doctrine, this doctrine, that doctrine, your own prosperity. It's the cross. It's yeah. the cross. cross. The it's enemy the hates cross. it because it's so it's powerful. The, cro the blood of Jesus is stronger than the enemy, than the, than the world, the flesh, the devil. And we must stay with it, and that's the power of it. That's, we can't play with the cross. That is our bridge to salvation. That's all. We've got to stay at the cross. We have to. And the church is not something we can like. You know, years ago, they took the blood out of the modern church's songbooks. Yeah. They took all the, the blood songs. Yeah. They said, we don't want a bloody religion. Right. I got news for you. We have <laughs> a bloody religion. That's You're right. telling us that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah, sacrifice, the blood of Messiah, the love of God is stronger, you know, and the, and the, the other last thing about that, I mean, just to give it some closure, the enemy launched his war against the Jewish people. He's tried for 4,000 years. He has, he has come against them. He's used Egypt. Egypt tried to wipe them out. Think about yes. it. Assyria tried to destroy them. Yes. Uh, Babylon tried to crush them. Rome tried to destroy them. Hitler tried to destroy them and all those things. But the ultimate story is Egypt is gone, Babylon is gone, Assyria is gone, Rome is gone, Hitler is gone, the terrorists will be gone, they're all going to be gone, but the nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel yes. lives, because the Messiah of Israel yes. lives, yes. I'm Israel high, yes. because our God is stronger and we win in the end. And if yes. we stay with God, we are going to win as well. And we have to remember that with every fight, no matter how it, bad it looks, no matter oh, what God, you see on television, us. no matter what you see with the culture, no, so the, in the end, we win. We do. And we have to prevail. We have to have that spirit no matter what. That's the faith. We, we, we are in a fight, but we're going to win it. But we have to stand strong. We yes, must we stand do. strong.